Hi girls, today we're looking at the creatine phosphate system, um, which is one of two of the anaerobic energy systems. Um, again, important to take notes, rewind, fast forward. I will be fuzzing myself out of a view um, as there's lots of diagrams in one video that I'd like you to watch um, and take screenshots of the diagrams. Our success criteria for today, uh, so you will achieve success in this lesson if you can identify the characteristics of the creatine phosphate system, identify which sports activities use this energy system and apply the energy system to a touch football context. So there are two anaerobic methods used by the body for resynthesizing ATP to create and supply energy. One uses a chemical called creatine phosphate, which is the creatine phosphate system, and the other, which is the lactic acid system, uses carbohydrates as its fuel. Okay, so the creatine phosphate system is an anaerobic method of resynthesizing ATP using creatine phosphate as the fuel. All right, um, very important that you get down um, the red box information. Creatine phosphate is a high energy phosphogen available in the muscle cells. The unfortunate thing about creatine phosphate is that it's only available in very short supply. It can only provide limited amounts of ATP to the muscles, so it will keep contracting. Okay, so the downfall of this system, as I said in the, in the previous lecture, um, is that creatine phosphate is only available in very short supply, thus only can only pro provide limited amounts of ATP to the muscles. Um, also something to make mention of is that the creatine phosphate system, if you do some further research, um, it is also referred to as the ATP PC system. I did say in the previous lecture, there's lots of nicknames for these energy systems, so that's another uh, nickname for this energy system. So this, this is actually the simplest um, energy system out of the three of them. Um, doesn't mean it's the easiest to grasp, but it is the simplest in terms of um, its production. Um, this system provides energy through a chemical reaction to resynthesize ATP using creatine phosphate, which like ATP is a high energy phosphogen available in the muscle cells. Now we already spoke about that. Um, the enzyme creatine kinesis speeds up the chemical reaction that results in the separation of creatine and phosphate and the release of energy. This energy is then used to recombine ADP and phosphate to reform ATP. One molecule of CP, so creatine phosphate, resynthesizes one molecule of ATP. Okay, one for one. Okay, now what I was talking about before. ADP and the P, remember the phosphate breaks off to formulate the ATP um, and then that ATP is used for muscle contraction. We know that that ATP needs to be resynthesized and that's done through um, creatine phosphate. Okay, so that's very, very important. And again, like the pre previous lecture, I showed you that diagram with how AD, um, ATP is formed that goes around the circle. So once that phosphate breaks off, ATP is produced, used for muscle contraction, we then need to resynthesize that ATP through creatine phosphate. Uh, probably the most perfect example of the creatine phosphate um, system in action um, is the 100 sprint race. Yeah, Okay, so his time was 9.80, um, and if you've looked at the previous lecture, um, you would know that the ATPPC system or the creatine phosphate system can can sort of last up to um, 10 seconds. So you can see in that video that Usain Bolt was predominantly using the creatine phosphate system and, and to train for that he's not just running um, 100 meter sprints. Um, to train his creatine phosphate system to improve it he would most certainly be 
be doing, you know, things like the, a 150-metre sprint, a 200-metre sprint, um, where it taps into that lactic acid system um, just to really reinforce and, and strengthen that, that high burst, high intensity, short duration um, energy. So the use of this system to provide energy for muscular work is limited by a small supply of creatine phosphate in the muscle cells. And thus, as a result, um, it's used to supply ATP for muscular contraction for only high intensity and short duration activities for up to 10 seconds of work. Okay, perfect example there. Think of other things like weightlifting, long jump, um, you know, short, foot, short athletic events. Uh, because this reaction happens very quickly, it occurs in the absence of oxygen and therefore it's known as the anaerobic system. Okay? Once the athlete has depleted the muscle stores of creatine phosphate, the body must utilise one of the other two energy systems as dominant energy source and method of ATP production. So let's pretend that Usain Bolt was actually running in the 200 metre uh, once his ATP stores have been depleted, his, sorry, his CP stores have been depleted, he would have to tap into his lactic acid system um, for ATP for energy, okay, to contract his muscles. So that's very, very important. So once your CP stores have been depleted, you tap into the next energy system. Um, the CP stores in the muscle can be resynthesized during low intensity exercise or at rest. It actually takes a long time, so several minutes in a sporting context to fully restore muscle creatine phosphate stores, um, which is actually why athletes training for speed must ensure they have sufficient amount of recovery times between each effort when working when working out. So, for example, if you're saying Bolt was training, um, you know, an Olympic Games build-up, um, you know, he wouldn't just be running 100 meter sprint after 100 meter sprint. He would be running, you know, 100 meter sprint. Um, he'd walk back, he'd recover. They actually say to restore creatine phosphate um, or ATP, restore for ATP, it actually takes around two to three minutes, okay, which is a long time in a training context. So you can imagine um, yourselves in that picture, you know, if you're doing athletics or swimming training, for example, um, you know, think about yourselves. If you're training for 100 metres, are you actually resting to restore those creatine phosphate um, stores of, of energy for two to three minutes. I certainly hope you are. Um, but um, in order to restore CP, you must be uh, resting um, for around two to three minutes. And that's probably something that a lot of people um, don't do sufficiently, or at least um, junior athletes. Senior athletes, obviously, hopefully they're doing that in their, in their training. So really important to take away from that, that CP stores in the muscle can be resynthesized during low intensity exercise or at rest. And they say research says that this takes around two to three minutes. Now in our touch football context, um, think about specific elements of touch football skills um, in play that, that require, you know, maybe high intensity, short duration um, for up to 10 seconds. Um, that, now that wouldn't just be running up and down the wing. Um, that, that, that's things that require that high intensity, short duration effort. So when I think of touch football and high intensity, short duration, I think of rucking, uh, maybe a dive to score, or maybe a quick turn and chase. Okay, so things you need to start thinking about. Um, if you have your position now in mind, when are you using the creatine phosphate system in your position? So as an, a link player, for example, when are you using it? Okay, middle player, wing player. So just to sum up, the creatine phosphate system, uh, its method of energy production is anaerobic, so it's without oxygen. The speed of ATP is very rapid. Fuel source is creatine phosphate, which is located in muscle cells, produces very limited ATP production. Okay, we know it only sort of produces a limited amount in a short amount of time because CP stores become really depleted quite quickly. Duration and intensity, it's used in sprints or any high intensity activity or effort. So remembering it's that 95 to 100% max effort. Uh, so, you know, a quick sprint to, to chase down someone with the ball um, in a touch football context. We're just going to finish with another video that, again, this is a really good one that, that sums up the ATP or creatine phosphate system um, quite well. So please take notes on this video. to perform sudden, powerful, explosive movements, it calls on the ATP-CP system. 
CP stands for creatine phosphate. This compound, which is stored in the muscle, is the main fuel for the ATP CP system. The ATP CP system works by first using up the ATP in our muscles. Then by breaking down creatine phosphate to give energy for ATP resynthesis. This system produces ATP very quickly. But the downside is that it runs out of fuel in around 10 seconds. So this is the main energy system for short-term, high-intensity effort.